Hello everybody and welcome to another C++ tutorial for beginners. Now in this video, I'm going to be covering something called tuples. Now I'll quickly note that some people do pronounce this tuple, so the actual thing we're going to look at is a tuple, but some people say tuple. Now I don't know what the correct, correct pronunciation is, so I'm just going to call it tuple because that's what I've always called it. Uh, but anyways, with that said, let's get into the video and I will talk to you about tuples. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do here is we're actually going to include the tuple package or library or whatever you call this here. Uh, but the reason we need this is because there's some functions that we're going to use. They're included in this package. And well, anyways, that's why we need to include it. Now, if you don't include this, you'll notice that probably almost all of this will actually still work for you, but there may be a few things that work a little bit differently or that don't work. So I haven't tested what's actually in this and what's not in this, but I'm pretty certain that some of the functions that I use here are included in this package. And well, that's why you're going to need to include it. But you guys feel free to experiment and, and not use it and see when something breaks if you don't have it. Anyways, let's look at what a tuple is. So a tuple is really like an array. It can hold many different elements in it, except those elements do not need to be the same type. And it has kind of different way of accessing and changing elements. But a tuple is very similar to an array in the sense that you kind of have an ordered collection of elements. So let me just create a tuple and then you'll see what I mean. So I'm going to use the data type tuple. Notice it's not highlighting that just because it's not kind of like a vanilla data type, like say int, char, um, float, so on. And anyways, I'm going to say tuple, and then I'm going to put within angle brackets like this, the data types that I want to be included in this tuple. So if I do something like int string comma char, what this is saying is that the first item in my tuple must be an int, the second is a string, and the third is a char or a character. And so you can define as many items as you want. You can make it just one item. You can make it two items. You can make it 3000 items, right? It's completely up to you. But this is how you define a tuple. So you do the angle brackets and then inside the uh, different types of the items you'll have. Then you put the name of the tuple. Uh, in this case, let me actually just remove the char and I'm just going to call this person. All right. So I've just initialized kind of an empty tuple. I haven't actually given the values that are stored in this tuple, but I have said, okay, you know, we're going to have this person tuple and these are the types of its items. Now, if I wanted to initialize this with some values, what I could do is put the open and closing closing parentheses, sorry, and then inside of here, just type the values that I want for the items of this tuple. So I would say something like 20 and then I'll say Tim, although that needs to be in double quotation marks. So the idea here is that we have this person tuple. The person it's storing is 20 years old and their name is Tim. Now, obviously, we don't have a label for what the int and the string are, but that's kind of the reason I'm doing uh, the int and the string and filling in these values. Anyways, that is how you make a tuple. So if we run this now, we should see that we don't get any problems. All is good. And now let me show you how we can access the different elements in a tuple. So any of you that are a little bit clever, you probably think that we can just do this person at and then index zero, and then that's going to access 20, right? Or you think we can do person at index one, and that's going to access Tim just like an array. Now I'll show you what happens when we try to do this. Let's run this here. We get an error. There's no match for this operator on this type of tuple. That is because you cannot do this. You cannot access and change elements uh, using this kind of index syntax. Instead, what you need to use is the function called get. So you say get, you put two angle brackets, you put an open parenthesis and a close parenthesis around the tuple. And then here you put the index of the item you want to access. So for example, if I put zero here and now I run this, it gives me the first item, which is 20. If I change this to one, it gives me the second item, which is Tim. So this is how you actually access the different elements in a tuple. Use get angle bracket index, closing angle bracket, open parenthesis, name of tuple, <laughs> closing parenthesis. Kind of complicated, but once you get used to that syntax, it's pretty straightforward to remember. So what I'm going to show you now is how we can actually change the elements in a tuple. So if I do get and then the index and then whatever the name of the tuple is, and then an equal sign after this, and let's change it to say Billy, and then we see out this again, you'll see this actually does change the uh, first index in our tuple. So it will change Tim to be Billy. So if we run this, Tim was first and then Billy, uh, let's just add an end L here so that we're getting some better looking output. Awesome. So Tim and then Billy. 
So again, that's how you access and modify the different elements of a tuple is by using this kind of get syntax. Now, let me just make another few tuples here just to show you some other things that we can do. So I can say something like tuple int char bool floats, right? And then I could say, okay, let's just call this thing. And then we could give it some values. So we could say, actually, you know, what? I'm not going to do it like that. Let's just declare thing. And then I will define the values that I want thing to hold. The way I would do that is I would say thing is equal to. And then here, what I actually need to do is I need to use this fancy function, which is called make tuple, which is going to take in all of the different values to initialize my tuple with. So here, since I didn't do it in this way, I didn't kind of inline initialize the tuple. What I need to do is say thing is equal to and then make tuple, which is the name of a function. And this function will then take the four items that we're going to initialize the tuple with. So now I could say something like 23. I could say, you know, H, I can say true. And then I could say maybe 24.3 or something for my float. And then, of course, if we decide to see out and we can just get zero of this is thing and then end L, let's copy this a few times and we'll get the rest of them. So see out one, two, three and run. We see we get 23 H one and 24.3. So that is indeed working. All right. So let me get rid of this example up here. That's old. We've already looked at that one. Now, what I want to show you is what happens if you don't initialize the value of a tuple and you just declare it like we did here. So again, I apologize because I know I confuse you guys by saying initialize and declare. That's just I've gotten so used to just always saying initialize even when you're only declaring something again for the probably 100th time. When you write a line like this, you are just declaring the variable. You are not initializing it because we have not yet given a value to it. We've just declared that this variable thing exists and it is of this type. We don't initialize it until we do something like we just did where we make the tuple or we actually inline initialize it by putting the values in here. Anyways, hopefully that makes sense. But now let's just see what happens if I see out all of the elements and I haven't initialized this tuple. When I do this, you can see that by default, they're all just zero. Now the char is giving us kind of this weird empty character because that's just the default ver uh, sorry, default value for char. But yeah, that's what you're getting when you see out all of these different values and you have not initialized them to anything. Then, of course, if you go ahead and initialize them, well, then you're going to get the correct values. So there's a few more ways that you can kind of declare a tuple. We also could uh, kind of omit doing that instead say is equal to and then make tuple like this would be fine as well. If we said tuple in char bool float thing is equal to and then we use the make tuple function. Not really a good reason to do that, but you could do that if you want to. If I run this now, you see that this still works. And so as you've seen now in C++, there's about 100 different ways to initialize variables to different values. All right, so that is the basics of tuples. Now I have a few more, I don't want to say advanced, but just kind of different or unique things that we can do with them. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. As you guys know, Algo Expert is the best platform to use when preparing for software engineering coding interviews. They have a ton of awesome features. They have great instructors like myself. And well, you can check them out from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. So the first thing that's interesting here that we can do is we can swap the contents of two tuples. So what I can do here is make another tuple. It has to have the same type. But if I say tuple int char bool and float and you know what? Now that I'm thinking about this, it's probably going to be easier for us if we just make a smaller tuple for this example. So let's delete that. I'm going to say tuple int int is equal to and then we will say, well, we need a name for the tuple first. We'll say T1 that's equal to make underscore tuple and then we'll just pass one two, and then we can copy this line to make tuple. We'll call this one T2 and then this one will have the value three, four. And now what I can do is, well, I can see out get zero of T1, get one of T, sorry, one, uh, get zero of T2 and then get one of T2. OK, so when I do this, we can see that we have the value one, two and then three, four. But now if I use this fancy function, which is called swap, I can say T1 dot swap t2 and this will now swap the content. So notice this is what the output was. We're getting one, two, then three, four. Now we should get it the other way around three, four, then one, two. That's exactly what we get because the contents of t1 were swapped with the contents of t2. 
However, look what happens if I try to do this. So if I add another value to tuple T2 and I make this three, four, five, let's see what happens when we run this. Notice we get an error. The reason we get an error is because these tuples have different types or different number of elements, and therefore we cannot make the swap because they are not the same type of tuple. So anyways, that is how the swap works. We need to make sure that's correct. Of course, we could then swap them again. Uh, we could say t1.swap t2, and then we're going to get it back to the original order because we just swapped it, then we reswapped it. Of course, we could also say t2.swap t1. Doesn't matter in which order you do this, it will give us the same result. And there you go. We can see we're getting the same thing. So the next thing to show you is something called tie. Now, what tie actually does for us is it will decompose a tuple into its individual elements. So when I say decompose, really what that means is you're taking some object or some data type that has multiple elements in it and you're breaking those multiple elements up into kind of separate unique variables. And so I can really only show you this with an example, but we have some tuple here T1 that has two elements. So what I'm going to do is say int X comma Y. So we'll uh, declare an X and Y integer. And now what I will do is I will say tie and I will tie uh, T1 and or sorry, not tie T1. I'm going to tie X, Y and make that equal to T1. And now what I'm going to do is see out x and c out y after I end l. So what this function does here is it takes in two variables and then you set it equal to whatever tuple you want to decompose and it will take the elements in that tuple and assign them to the variables. So in this case, x will be equal to one and y will be equal to two because well, x is the first variable we put here, y is the second, and we're assigning that to tuple t1. So if I do this now, you see that, uh, oops, we need a semicolon here. So let's rerun this. You see that we get one, two with no problems. And if I swap this and I make this y comma x, now we're going to get two, one. And then after this, we can still see out t1 and we'll see that t1 is still uh, perfectly valid. So we'll say get zero of and then T1 and then end L. And then I guess we can just copy this. And we'll do the same thing with get one and then make sure we add our end L here. So when I run this, you see we get two one and then we get one two. Uh, again, this is working properly. This, this is what the tie function does. Now, of course, you need to make sure that the uh, type of the variables you are going to be storing the elements from the tuple in are the same type as the elements in the tuple. So if I change this to like char, right, and then I try to run this, we're going to get, well, actually this worked, but not in the way that we thought it was going to work because it was able to convert the int to a char. But clearly this is not what we're looking for, right? We wanted the actual numeric value. We didn't want some weird character value. And so that's kind of the idea there. You just need to make sure the types are matching. Hopefully you're getting the idea now as you're seeing a bunch of C++ code that the types really, really matter in a strongly typed language like C++. Okay, so the last thing I have to show you here is what's called tuple concatenation. Okay, so sorry for the abrupt cut there, but as I said, what I'm going to show you is tuple concatenation. So tuple concatenation involves taking two tuples and just combining them together. And so I'm going to show you exactly how we can do that. The first thing, though, that we need to do is create two tuples. And so I'm going to say tuple and we'll make its type int and char and we'll say this is called T1. And then we can just initialize it this way. So we can do uh, maybe 20 and then T. And then we can do another tuple. This tuple does not have to have the same type. I can do tuple maybe char string. And then that's T2. And this is a char. And sorry, the char needs to be in single quotation marks, not double quotation marks. So we'll make this maybe R. And then for the string, we can make this hello world exclamation point. OK, so now what I want to do is take these two tuples and essentially what I want to create is their combination. So 20 T R and then hello world, except obviously this would have double quotation marks. That's what I want to try to create. So how do we do that? Well, there is this function and this function is called tuple underscore cat. And what it does is concatenate two tuples together. So it takes the two tuples you want to combine. So T1 and T2, and then it returns to you a new tuple, which is the combination. And so what I need to do is assign this to a variable so I can do something like tuple. And then we can call this maybe T3 is equal to tuple cat. Now I'm going to stop for one second and I'm going to give you guys a, a kind of a quiz here, although this is pretty hard to answer. So if you answer this, uh, congratulations. But 
I want you to look at this and try to determine what the error is right now. If I run this code right now, this is not going to work. Or if it works, it's not going to give us the kind of expected behavior. And so just look at this and see if you can figure out what I might need to do to actually make this work. The hint I'll give you, it has something to do with the different types that we have. All right, so pause the video. If you want to try to do that, I'm going to continue now. I'm going to run the code and notice we're getting an error. It says missing template arguments before T3. So since I defined a tuple, I need to define the type of this tuple. I can't just say tuple T3. I need to define what's going to be in this tuple. And so what is going to be in this tuple? Well, it's the concatenation of these two tuples, which means it's going to be int char char string because we're going to have int char and then the char from tuple t2 and then the string from tuple t2 and so i need to define that here with t3 otherwise we get that problem and so now if i do this we can see that all works all is fine and now i'll just see out this so we can see it that it's actually working so if i do get um zero and then t3 and sorry this is in parentheses t3 and then end l and now let's just print this for all of the different items. So one, two, and three. If I run this, you can see that we're getting exactly what we expected. Awesome. Now, the thing is, this is kind of annoying, right? Like, I don't want to have to do this, especially if I don't know the types of the two tuples that I'm concatenating. And that could actually happen, or you can find out the types of them, but it's like complicated to do that in some situations. So there's this great word in C++. It is called auto. And what auto will do is infer the type of a variable based on whatever you initialize it with. So that might be a lot of words or kind of confusing jargon, but essentially when you put auto, it will automatically determine what type this tuple is going to be. And it can do that. The C++ compiler can do that by looking at the type of these two tuples, seeing what this tuple cat returns and determining that, oh, okay, it's going to return to me a tuple that has int char char and string. And so if I say auto T3, now what will happen is by default, this variable will be of type tuple int char char string, and we don't need to write all of that out. So if I run this now, we can see that this works just like we would expect because of the auto keyword. Now, I generally recommend staying away from doing type inference like this. This is what this is called. You're telling the compiler, hey, figure this type out for me. I don't want to figure it out myself. The reason I say that is because as soon as you start using these keywords, you kind of don't appreciate what the types are that you're actually using. And you can run into a lot of bugs in your program if you don't know what certain types are and you're just using auto everywhere. So be very careful when you use this. In a situation like this, it's fine. You know the two types of your tuples and you're just saving yourself a few kind of lines of code or a few characters of code that you're writing out. Uh, this is a useful keyword, but again, just be careful with it, especially when you're learning. I would always opt to write out all the types explicitly just to make sure I fully understand exactly what they are. So anyways, with that said, I'm going to leave the video here. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another YouTube video.